Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And this episode, it'll probably make some of you guys mad. I know probably one or two of you at least. Uh, but because uh, last time I did an episode where I actually made a joke. Uh, I was reviewing a Donny Cates book and I put out a joke of me just falling asleep because the book bored me. And I was just a joke. And in the video, I actually put text on the screen that says, the real review is coming in a few days or whatever. <laughs> and someone got really mad. They were like, I can't believe you can talk for an hour about this other story that sucked, but you can't talk, you know, more than 10 minutes. You can't even talk like 10 minutes for like a book that's actually good or whatever. And it's like, look, we're never, we're not always going to agree on stuff, but we're just not agreeing on comic books. It's the lowest stakes possible. I say that all the time. Like, Literally no one dies because you and I disagree on a story. Uh, so so check that shit at the door, please. <laughs> and don't bring that here. Um, you know, just tell me your opinion. Tell me why you do like it and have like good argument for it. And we can have a discussion and yeah, and we'll, it'll be more fun that way. Trust me. Um, but in this one, I'm going to cover a lot of books. I think I'm going to try to cram. I'll see what I can do. I'll see how much time we have because I want to try to keep these under 15 minutes if I can. Um, but we'll start with... I guess Bendis. Well, let's go back to the Bendis stuff with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, as we know, in the last time we talked about Bendis, uh, he had the Clintar, you know, the suit, the Venom suit, get brought back to Clintar, the planet, and was cleansed of all of its rage and hate and everything. And so since then, Flash has gone off to become a space knight, an agent of the cosmos, uh, which was a, an executive decision, not really a creative one, I feel like. Um, although I feel like the writer of that book did the best he could with it, Robbie Thompson, and we did discuss that in the last episode. So be sure to go check that out, because this week we're talking about space knight. It's like all week worth of space knight stuff. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so please go check that episode out. I'll try to put a link to that down below. That was the last episode we made. And, and so, yeah, this, this story is, I don't know, I, I, it's a, I, it's, I go back and forth. It's an okay concept. I feel like in the right hands, it could be really, it could have, you know, you could have a lot of fun with the Space Knight idea with Venom. Um, but I think Robbie may not have been the perfect person for the job, but I think Robbie did an admirable job and tried to do the best they could to make it as fun as they could. Um, I just... I'm just kind of mixed on it. You know, it's like 50-50 for me. It's not terrible. It's not great. I'm just kind of in the middle, lukewarm on it. Um, but this, the stories we're going to talk about today, uh, suck. <laughs> like, in my in my opinion, they suck. You guys have seen me be really harsh on Brian Michael Bendis. Uh, the guy, um, the reason I'm so hard on his writing, and same with Donny Cates sometimes, is because I've seen those guys do great work. And of course, great is always subjective, right? It's my opinion. So what I think is great, you might not, and vice versa. But still, I know those guys can knock it out of the park. Uh, just just crush it. And I don't see them do it often. I see I see Donnie try more, a lot more, than uh, Bendis does. Bendis, I think, just phones in everything he writes nowadays. And it's a real shame, because I think that guy is a real talent but he just i don't know there's a part of him i think that doesn't care anymore it's or is complacent or whatever um so i'm not yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of his writing and when i went back to read this stuff it reminded me of why i walked away from marvel for a while because bendis was writing like four or five books and a lot of them were books that i wanted to check out like uh, guardians of the galaxy i wasn't a big fan of those characters uh even though i love and i've been reading comics for 30 plus years Guardians, like I remember the Vance Astro stuff a little bit, but I don't. I never really got into these versions of uh, of these characters, except outside of Annihilation, you know, which was a really great book if you haven't read it. Um, so I wanted to learn more, especially after the movies had come out. And reading this stuff was just it's just garbage in my opinion. It's it's just nothing matters, and everything is so like spread out. And I, I will say he did he wrote an okay Gamora, and like maybe like a little bit okay with Rocket and Groot, but. Uh, only at times, like not consistently, I felt. So the so we talked about his first run already. This is now the second half of his run. And before we get into the actual Guardians of the Galaxy book, because as we know in the last uh, discussion we had, that series ended. It ended like with issue 30 something. It was like that they ended the series. And then during the hiatus, they did a crossover uh, which was called Black Vortex, which I guess they couldn't call Black Mirror because of the show, but bl the Black Vortex is actually a mirror, <laughs> and it uh, was built by a celestial and given to like this race of people, and that's kind of the focus of this story. Uh, but I don't want to talk about the story because Venom plays almost no part in it. Uh, this is like a, a 10 or 12 issue crossover, something around that, 
and Venom, you can count like, you know, like maybe 20 panels, if that, or a couple, you know, maybe he'll get a full page in, a, in a, every like four or five issues or something like, but he doesn't really contribute much. Like, I think he helps take down one guy or something, but in otherwise, he's just in the background. And what's really annoying is this is right after Bendis just did that big story where he cleansed the suit and kind of set Flash on this new path. And then he proceeds to just make that character a background character. And, you know, also he could write Kitty Pride. You know, he brought uh, the X-Men into this. So it's an X-Men Guardians of the Galaxy crossover. Um, so we get Venom, Agent Venom teaming up with, you know, the X-Men. Kitty Pride is there. She's kind of, you know, um, I think in this story becomes the new Star-Lord because Star-Lord is called back to his home planet of Sparta, Sparta X or whatever it's called. And, uh, and he is going to become the new emperor there. So he'll be Emperor Quill coming up. Uh, so she actually... I think in this story is the one who kind of joins the team. She starts to build a relationship with uh, Star-Lord, which also is just like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of times when writers, uh, Bendis is is the king at this sometimes. Uh, and a lot of people that work with Bendis, you know, like that he he got into the industry. Um, they like to ship a lot of people. <laughs> they're just like, they're like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if uh, Kitty Pride, who he loved. And so when he wrote Ultimate Spider-Man, he had Kitty Pride date Peter Parker and Ultimate Spider-Man. And now he's writing Guardians of the Galaxy. And he's like, I want her to date Peter Quill now that I'm writing this book. And it's just like, he's, it, it's, it's a little weird. Actually, it's, it's, it's just downright creepy um, because these are fictional characters. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I like Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson, you know, and I like them as a couple. Um, but if, if I came into writing those two characters and they were miles apart, nowhere near being a couple, I wouldn't just put them together in one issue and just be like, all right, let's, let's just get them back together. Um, I would, I would try to evolve that or do something with that or do something completely different. I don't know. Uh, hard to say, but I, I wouldn't do what this is. This is just lazy and creepy. Like I said, it's just, it's like Paul, uh, uh well, not, not him, but uh, to Bruce Tim. uh, Bruce Tim does that all the time with Batgirl. He just constantly wants Batgirl and Batman to hook up. It's really creepy in my opinion. So Bendis, that's what this is. Black Vortex is basically a way for Bendis to get uh, Kitty Pride on the Guardians of the Galaxy team and make her the new Star-Lord and have her date Peter Quill. I guess. Uh, and then also to return this mirror back to wherever it belongs or whatever. The story sucks. I don't want to break it down because like I said, Venom doesn't really attribute much to this story at all. Um, so after Black Vortex, I would say if you're a completionist and you have to have every Venom comic, um, I guess pick up Black Vortex. I'll put a list up on screen there of all the issues that are tied into that series. If you want to go pick up those issues individually, or if you just want to buy the Black Vortex straight paperback, like if you're a completionist, I guess get it, but he doesn't really do anything. And he doesn't do anything in any of the stories I'm talking about today um, outside of like one minor thing. So we'll get into that. Um, because now we have Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3 or 4, whatever. It's like the third or fourth relaunch. Uh, and it's pretty crazy when that movie did as well as it did and it made as many fans as it did. And then you get Bendis, who was supposedly the, the number one writer over at Marvel at the time. And you get him to launch a Guardians of the Galaxy book. And by issue 30, it, the sales are so bad, they already have to reboot it. It's just... It just showed you the problems that... <laughs> that it's, you know, that I'm not alone in saying that this book is bad. Um... You know, but if you're out there and you have a different opinion, definitely let me know down below. I don't, I don't like to crap on other people's opinions. So if you do have a different one in mind, you know, please let me know in the comments. But I do not like this run. So the second of or this next volume, I guess, uh, has a new number one, and it starts off with a story called Emperor Quill, I believe, and uh, and it has Kitty Pride on the team, and you know, Venom's there and everything like that. And I don't know, they, they just go out on adventures in space and it's it's boring. It's, it's absolutely boring, this book. Uh, they go to nowhere for a little while. They fight this new um, Kree woman named Hala. Um, and uh, then they go and fight uh, the, the, the Nowhere Squad or something like that. It, I guess Venom helps like tie up one of the guys. He like puts his arm around him and like his arms behind his back and is like holding his head. And he's like, you know, so that uh, Groot can get a shot in or something. But... In this whole first trade, uh, nothing happens. And it's weird because these trades have like four issues in them. They're only like 100 page trades. And that's with the special features section in the back. So it's like four issues per trade. And, and Marvel charged like, you know, put them out in hardcover and charge like 20 or 25 bucks for them. I mean, just such a, God, I hate it. I hate it. It's it's so, it's so, um, it's so uh, uh, wrong, I think, as far as like quality and quantity. Like if you're going to put out a hardcover for 25 bucks, 
at least make six issues in it and I don't know make make them better than this this I wouldn't even have printed these in hardcover honestly I wouldn't have wasted the the that uh, that quality of uh, of printing to be to be honest with you um but, uh, but yeah, I'm really mean about these series because they, I honestly felt like reading these were just a complete waste of my time. And that's why I'm not going to do an hour discussion on them because I feel like it'll be a complete waste of your time. <laughs> so I'm just kind of grazing over them. So the first trade, nothing happens. Venom doesn't do anything. So we have Black Vortex, which is like about 10 or 12 issues, like I said. Nothing happens with Venom in that. We have uh, six or four issues or five issues of Guardians already. Nothing really happens with Venom there. And then we have the second volume, which is called Wanted, I believe. And in this volume, there's actually one whole issue that focuses on Venom. Uh, Venom and Groot decide to team up with each other because the team, they're looking for Angela, you know, who uh, used to be a Spawn character. Uh, she was an angel from heaven in Spawn. And then I guess created by Neil Gaiman. And there was a big legal battle over her. So she died in the Spawn comic. She died in like issue 100 of Spawn. But now she's over in Marvel because Neil Gaiman won some kind of custody battle or whatever uh and brought her over to marvel comics and they decided to put her in marvel and make her like thor's sister and do all these other dumb things with her um and uh which is a shame because i thought that was a really cool character when she was a spawn character but at marvel she's kind of been like mad to me um and they bring her over and they're looking or they're looking for her the guardians of the galaxy are looking for her she's gonna they're gonna have her join the team or she's been a part of the team on and off so they want to bring her on board and she got separated from them so now they're just going to all these planets looking for her and along the way uh you know they get into some trouble and they fight other races alien races and stuff and one of which is a single issue all dedicated to venom and groot when they go down to a planet where they find some scrolls and if you don't know the lore obviously venom has an issue with the scrolls and he doesn't like seeing them so he's ready to just rip them all apart but Groot stops them and then the scrolls and these are the exact scrolls a lot of them that invaded earth during secret invasion and they were trying to run throughout the galaxy and now they're being you know hunted down and there's only you know a, a couple dozen of them or a couple hundred of them left and Venom's like I don't feel any sympathy for you guys you know and he's like look and they're like look we understand what we did we're following orders and we, we understand we hurt people and all these things like you know we're trying to make amends you know help us out or something so then Venom and Groot kind of actually i think they merged together at one point uh in one really cool shot where they're kind of merged and groot's like on venom's back and stuff which was pretty cool looking um but uh but other than that it's like that's that's it then they they kind of team up with the scrolls they fight these other aliens and then they rejoin with the other group uh you know the main group and then they go to all these planets and then finally find angel at the end and that's it <laughs> it's like that's it man you get one issue out of like now we're up to like maybe 20 issues between black vortex and now where we have about 20 issues we've discussed and one of them was dedicated to venom and this is from the same writer who like i said came up with this big story well it wasn't a big story it was it was like one or two issues but it was a big moment in the character's history of the suit being cleansed and being you know brought to to space knight status or whatever and then you have Bendis just like, all right, I'm done. I don't want to do anything else with him. Uh, Bendis has been on record to say that he does not like symbiotes at all. That's why in his Ultimate comic, he created a completely different take on symbiotes, uh, which luckily I think Donny Cates is doing something actually interesting with with uh, the maker and stuff over in his book. I really like that, actually, everything he's doing with that, uh, because it is. It's an artificially made symbiote. It is not an alien from outer space. So at least someone's doing something neat with that. But that's how Bendis is. He comes up with an idea and then he abandons it. He just doesn't care. And so he doesn't really do anything else with Flash at all in this. Um, in fact, uh, we'll just cram in the Civil War stuff now because, you know, we'll make us a 20 minute video and just get it all done with now because I Civil War 2 is a silly concept uh, pretty much. I mean, it, 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 you can argue that it's a neat concept, um, but the, the execution, I think, is really kind of lazy on it. Basically, the Inhumans, there's a new Inhuman that pops up who can see the future. Uh, or potential futures, but the potential uh, of his future is that visions that he's seeing are very high. It's like 90%, you know, each vision or, that they could happen. Um, so he could be wrong at times, but for the most part, he's going to be right. So they, they decide to trust one of his visions and go be in a place where Thanos is going to arrive, uh, you know, uh, to like find some Infinity Stones. And, uh, you know, Rhodey, uh, you know, a war machine, and Carol Danvers, who's like the leader of this Avengers group, they show up to fight Thanos, and in the battle, uh, they defeat Thanos, but War Machine gets killed. So, of course, when Iron Man hears that, a civil war starts, <laughs> just like in the Captain America uh, Iron Man Civil War. So on one side, Tony is like, look, I, you know, I'm a futurist, and this 
and I, I, I've been wrong with predictions, and I was the one who made a mistake last time and got our friends killed. Now you're doing it, Carol Danvers. So, like, I'm not going to be on that side again. Like, I'm, I'm not going to fall on that side. He's like, we need to, um, you know, do something about this kid, you know, talk to the kid or isolate him or something or figure out his powers. But I don't want to I don't want to go down this road with you, you know, with you guys again like this. And so this big battle you know uh, takes place on earth where heroes have to choose a side again you know like do we do we side with carol and just trust this kid is telling uh his visions are true but then when he sees like miles morales like kill captain america miles is like i would never do that and so he decides all right they're in a fight and he's like i can't fight you cap but like i, I would never kill you I, like, that vision that i saw because now this inhuman guy can imprint his visions into everyone else's minds as he gets stronger Miles is like, I can't do it. He's I'm sick to my stomach. I, I would never kill you. And that kind of turns the tide of the battle a little bit. Um, so then when it looks like Carol's side is going to lose, she calls the Guardians of the Galaxy, which happens in the third trade paperback of Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, so we'll talk about that real quick. Uh, in that, they get a message from Carol saying, hey, come back to Earth. Uh, and so they're like, okay, we'll go back to Earth and, and help you out. And that's what they do. So then from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 uh, of this run anyway, this volume, and uh, or this series and then civil war ii they kind of take place at the same time and really venom is only in it a handful of pages i swear it's such a waste uh they don't do anything with that character except they brought him back to earth uh which is something i guess um but that's it that's all that happens and it's like uh, he they come the guardians show up they help carol in one big battle and then that's it then the battle ends and then the Civil War II ends and everyone realizes they're idiots and all these characters that were written out of character just to make a story happen um, ends. And it's just like every Mar other Marvel event that just sucks and, and is just supposed to be everyone's best quality of work. And it's it's uh, most people's worst you know, a, a qualities of work. So, um, so yeah, so Civil War II, what a, what a waste of time. Uh, the, the third trade paperback, what a waste of time. And the, the last thing I'll talk about is the only thing in the third trade paperback that kind of focused on a, a, a flash, which is as they're leaving Earth, um, uh, you know, after the Civil War battle, they I run into Spider-Man and battle Spider-Man. And then as they're battling him, they realize it's not really Spider-Man, that it's a scroll. And so uh, Flash, uh, but the real Spider-Man was captured and knocked out. So they bring that Spider-Man back to Earth and then they they defeat the scroll or whatever, whatever happened. I don't know. The story was a mess, uh, but that was the only issue that kind of focused. And that was the last issue of the third volume. And then I think there's another volume after this where Flash is again in it for a couple pages in volume four. Um, but that's it. Like that's that's all. F Flash literally doesn't really contribute much to any of these stories. And I, I've probably talked about or glazed over, I should say, you know, like almost 30 books here. And, uh, and he's, he, I barely, he's barely a part of any of them. So this whole era from, uh, from Black Vortex to Guardians of the Galaxy series four, or whatever it is, volumes one, two, three, and four, and then uh, Civil War two, just a mess. I'm just not a fan of this at all. It's, it's not good. Um, and it's, you know, just be thankful I didn't go into super detail because this is the Venom vlog. I would have been talking about every other character except Venom. It would have been a complete waste of time. So again, if you're a completionist and you just want every appearance of any Venom at all, you know, pick up the trades, pick up Black Vortex, pick up volumes one, two, and three of the Guardians Galaxy, or four also, I guess, uh, and pick up Civil War II. And I, I don't know, I guess. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got to say. Um, in the next episode, we will actually talk about an actual progression of character with Flash Thompson. So in this issue, or this episode, he did go back to Earth. So we're going to get one more story of him in space as a space knight in his solo series before he rejoins with the Guardians of the Galaxy and comes back to Earth. So that'll be the next episode we talk about, which will be like issues, um, I think, uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10 of the Space Knight series. And then the final episode we'll talk about is... Um, is issues 11, 12, and 13. Um, and then the, the special backup story from issue 150 of Venom, those are basically the last Flash Thompson stories of, as, as Venom. So we will see his conclusion from going Space Knight, coming back to Earth, reuniting with Andy, becoming Agent Venom again, and then losing the costume and it going off to Lee Price that's going to be coming up in two episodes from now. So next episode, we'll talk about 7, 8, 9, and 10 of the main series. And then we'll talk about the Andy uh, stuff at the end in the final episode. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's boring. This whole, this whole thing, this whole, all these books, I read them and I just was like, I hate myself for reading these books. And then I had to reread two of them because I forgot what happened. I was like, no, surely Venom was in Black Vortex more than that. No. And surely he was in uh, Civil War more than that. No. 
So, so uh, anyway, uh, thankfully they were free on Amazon, so I could I was able to read them on my comics or my Amazon Prime account, whatever it is. Um, they let me read them for free, so I'm like, cool. At least I got that. But otherwise, you know, you can skip these if you want character progression. But if you want every appearance of the character, obviously pick them up and add them to your collection if you're a completionist. Uh, but let me know what you think. Obviously, if you have a different opinion to me, if you think uh, you know Flash added way more value than I'm saying he did, let me know down in the comments below. We can definitely have a conversation about it down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.